This presentation is protected by U.S. and international copyright laws. Reproduction, distribution, display, and use of this presentation without written permission of the International Code Council is prohibited. Residential Fire Sprinklers You most likely have heard that term in either a positive or negative light. This webinar is designed to assist you in understanding what is actually required in the code so you can develop a local plan to successfully manage your residential fire sprinkler program. The Residential Fire Sprinkler Systems Design, Installation, and Code Administration publication is the nucleus that a successful implementation evolves around. This publication is unique in that it provides specific design, installation, application, and enforcement information on residential fire sprinkler systems through the use of numerous graphics, photos, examples, and real-world applications. The result is an easy to comprehend yet an in-depth coverage of the subject. This webinar will answer these questions. What does the code actually say? Why put fire sprinklers in dwellings? What is their purpose? What do you need to consider when developing an implementation plan for your jurisdiction? What training is available from ICC? What ICC certifications are available? And what other resources are available? Before we get started, how about a little history? In 1982, San Clemente, California became the first city to require residential fire sprinklers in new homes. Ronnie J. Coleman, the then San Clemente fire chief, led the initiative that created that local ordinance, and he remains a leading advocate of residential fire sprinklers today. Over the years, hundreds more jurisdictions around the country have followed suit. And now, the 2009 International Residential Code, referred to as the IRC, contains requirements for the installation and design of fire sprinkler systems in dwellings. So let's look at what the IRC actually says and at the design standards for residential fire sprinklers. Specifically, the IRC states that an automatic fire sprinkler system is a life safety component required in all new townhomes. For townhomes, the requirement for residential fire sprinklers takes effect upon adoption of the 2009 IRC. The requirement applies to townhomes regulated by the IRC, which are those limited to three stories in height. The 2009 IRC also requires fire sprinkler systems in all new one and two family homes effective January 1, 2011. This requirement applies to single family dwellings and duplexes. Manufactured homes are also included since they are considered single family homes as well. The 2009 IRC indicates an effective date of January 1, 2011. However, whether you have already adopted the IRC or you are planning to adopt the IRC, that delayed effective date has already passed, so this requirement for dwellings and duplexes also becomes effective when the IRC is adopted. The requirement for residential fire sprinklers is not a retroactive requirement. The requirement is written to apply to new construction. The only time the residential fire sprinkler requirement would be applied to an existing dwelling is when the owner decides to construct an addition or remodel and the dwelling is already equipped with a residential fire sprinkler system. In those cases, the residential fire sprinkler system would need to be extended or modified where necessary based on the extent of the new construction. These specific sections in the IRC, Section R313.2 
and R314.2 contain the requirements for residential fire sprinklers in dwellings and townhomes. These sections also specify that the design of the fire sprinkler system must conform to either IRC Section P2904 or the National Fire Protection Association Standard 13D installation of sprinkler systems in one and two family dwellings and manufactured homes simply referred to as NFPA 13D. A residential fire sprinkler system aids in the detection and control of fires in residential occupancies. When installed in accordance with either of these reference standards, the automatic sprinkler system is expected to prevent total fire involvement in the room of fire origin, which is known as flashover. A properly designed, installed, and maintained residential fire sprinkler system improves the likelihood of occupants escaping or being evacuated once fire occurs in the dwelling. So why install residential fire sprinklers in dwellings anyway? Aren't fire sprinklers limited to commercial and industrial buildings? In this part of the program, we will look at some reports and actual live fire tests that provide insight into where life-threatening fires occur. There are several facts which we will discuss that have led to the need for fire sprinkler systems in dwellings and townhomes. First, let's take a look at the fire fatalities. The National Fire Protection Association, or the NFPA, collects data on all types of fires and fire department responses. Based on the NFPA data, we know that in 2007, 78% of all the structure fires occurred in residential properties. This means that three out of every four structure fires occurred in a residential property. We also know that in 2007, the loss of life from fire was a staggering 3,430 civilians. But more surprising is the fact that 84%, or 2,877, of those civilian fire deaths occurred in dwellings. The national average shows us that one person will perish in a dwelling fire every 183 minutes. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, commonly referred to as NIST, conducts testing and evaluation of a multitude of issues which affect life safety. The NIST Technical Note 1455 compares safe escape times from a typical dwelling fire between 1975 and 2003. NIST found that in 1975, the time for a person to safely escape during the average dwelling fire was 17 minutes. By 2003, the time to safely escape had shrunk to as low as three minutes. What had changed in those 18 years? Construction changed. We now better insulate our homes. We seal the home up tight to reduce loss of heated and cool air. And most importantly, the bulk of home furnishings are now manufactured of synthetic and plastic materials which burn much hotter and create much more deadly smoke. Flashover, the phenomenon during a fire where the entire room suddenly erupts in flames, occurs much sooner in our newer homes. Typically, people caught in a flashover unfortunately do not survive. The shorter time until flashover has also affected fire departments. Firefighters typically can no longer arrive at a dwelling fire before flashover occurs, where they would have had the opportunity to attack and stop the fire before lives were lost. In 2007, NIST determined 
that the chance of death from a dwelling fire is reduced 82% when both residential fire sprinklers and smoke alarms are installed. The United States Fire Administration has released information on fires occurring from 2003 to 2008. This data shows an average of 380,000 fires occur each year in homes. And each year those home fires result in an average property loss of $6.4 billion. During that time period, the average annual loss of life from home fires was 2,840 civilians with an average of 13,600 civilians injured each year. This is an average of one life lost for every 133 house fires. The United States Fire Administration has also stated that annually more Americans die from house fires than from all other natural disasters. Fire loss records attest to the life-saving ability of residential fire sprinklers. NIST studied reports of over 2,000 fires in dwellings equipped with residential fire sprinklers. Based on our national average of one death for every 133 fires, these 2,000 fires should have resulted in at least 15 fire deaths. But amazingly enough, there was not even a single fatality. Data from the NFPA confirms the effectiveness of residential fire sprinklers. According to their records, occupants in dwelling fires have a 50% greater chance of escape when the dwelling has a residential fire sprinkler system versus only having smoke alarms. The simplicity of fire sprinklers makes them very reliable and effective life safety devices. The objective of the residential fire sprinkler system is life safety. A residential fire sprinkler system is not designed to control a fire or to reduce property loss. Its primary purpose is to maintain a survivable environment long enough for the occupants to safely evacuate. Fire sprinklers may look alike, but residential fire sprinklers differ from commercial fire sprinklers in several key ways. The traditional commercial fire sprinkler is designed to save the contents and the building. And this methodology has been successful for over 100 years. The fire sprinkler industry has met the challenge of developing fire sprinklers to protect the occupants. The residential fire sprinkler operates faster, discharges less water, and is capable of containing the heat and toxic fire gases before they reach lethal levels in the dwelling. Residential fire sprinklers are designed to discharge less water than commercial fire sprinklers. Residential fire sprinklers are designed to operate for a shorter period of time than commercial fire sprinklers. They flow less water and for a shorter duration because their goal is to provide for occupant safety and safe evacuation. There are no moving parts to wear out. They do not need mechanical or electrical devices to initiate them. They simply react to the heat from a threatening fire. Again, the simplicity of residential fire sprinklers makes them reliable and effective life safety devices. Homes may look fundamentally the same as they did a couple decades ago, but the construction materials and the building design have changed considerably. Lightweight construction is now very common, but it ignites easier and fails sooner than traditional construction. Many components are made of plastic or plastic composites and they burn hotter and create much more smoke. Buildings are now designed to be more energy efficient. 
the result being tighter construction which does not allow heat and smoke to seep out but rather creates more of an oven effect. The United States Fire Administration in a letter to the Department of Housing and Urban Development dated January 11, 2011 stated home furnishings were once predominantly made of natural materials but now are mostly fabricated of synthetic materials. These synthetic materials burn faster and hotter than natural materials, leaving occupants considerably less time to escape a fast-growing fire. Smoke alarms alone are no longer sufficient to ensure the safety of our citizens in their homes. Not only are the homes constructed differently, but the materials we use to furnish and decorate our homes have changed also. The typical fuel load found in dwellings and other residential occupancies averages around 10 pounds of combustible materials per square foot. While the average fuel load in homes has remained about the same, the ease of ignition and the rate of heat release from furniture and furnishings has vastly increased. Residential fire sprinklers are designed to have a fast response to fire and routinely operate in one minute or less, well before the flashover stage is reached. This fast response makes them capable of saving victims who are even sleeping in the room of fire origin. We are going to watch a video of a live fire test conducted by NIST. This laboratory fire test is designed to depict a fire in a typical living room that is not protected with residential fire sprinklers. What you will see in this video may surprise you. The fire starts when a heat source such as a cigarette ignites the sofa. As the fire ignites and grows, it consumes oxygen in the air, producing smoke and carbon monoxide, a toxic and combustible gas. The hot smoke and gas rise toward the ceiling and spread to the walls of the room. The hot smoke and gas is forced downward into the room. And while the fire is still confined to the sofa, the smoke temperature in the room is already over 300 degrees. As the fire on the sofa grows, the temperature in the smoke increases. Very quickly, the temperature will exceed 1,000 degrees at the ceiling. The hot smoke and gases have heated everything in the room to its ignition temperature. And suddenly, the carbon monoxide in the smoke ignites and the entire room bursts into flames. The massive increase of heat and smoke literally explodes out of the room and likely spreads throughout the house. This phenomenon is called flashover. We are now going to view a second fire test. In this fire test we see the identical room layout but this time the room is protected with a single residential fire sprinkler. We have the same type fire as you see the fire start with the ignition of the sofa. Again, the air in the room provides oxygen and the fire produces hot smoke and carbon monoxide gas. At this point, the fire looks nearly identical as the hot smoke and gas rise toward the ceiling and the ceiling stops the rising plume and the smoke spreads toward the walls. The walls confine the smoke and force it to bank downward. As the fire on the sofa grows, the temperature and the smoke increases. But in this test, a fire sprinkler operates and the fire no longer continues to grow. The temperature at the ceiling never reaches 1000 degrees Fahrenheit because the fire sprinkler will typically operate at 155 degrees Fahrenheit. The fatal phenomenon of flashover never occurs because the temperature was not allowed to reach the high temperatures needed. This is a photo from the fire test without fire sprinklers. It is showing flashover. Note the time clock in the lower left hand corner of the picture. 
This photo is 3 minutes and 16 seconds after the fire was ignited. When flashover occurs, the entire room is engulfed in fire. As you can see flames all the way down to the floor. It is next to impossible for any occupants in the room to survive. Based on national averages, this is about the time that the fire department is receiving notification of the fire. This is a photo from the fire test with fire sprinklers and it is showing the time at which the single fire sprinkler operated. Again, note the time clock in the lower left hand corner. In this test, the fire sprinkler in the room operated 1 minute 27 seconds after ignition occurred and the room never reached a flashover condition. The room is maintained in a tenable or survivable condition. It is a specific goal of residential fire sprinklers to maintain a survivable environment so that the occupants can escape. We have identified what the code says with regard to requiring residential fire sprinklers and we have shown why the code now contains this requirement. The next question is how do we take this knowledge and create an effective residential fire sprinkler program? To accomplish this we are going to look at developing an implementation plan. Each jurisdiction will have their own individualized plan, however there are many fundamental concepts each plan will have in common. And typically the stakeholders in developing the plan will be similar. The main issues your implementation plan should include are identifying the stakeholders in the process. Determining which department in your local jurisdiction will be responsible for plan review and inspection. Assessing whether your current staff is adequately trained. Consider whether any certifications are needed, either for your staff or for contractors and installers. Conferring with the water purveyor to be certain that they are aware of this new requirement and ascertain whether there will be any hesitancy from the water purveyors with regard to accepting this new requirement. So who are the stakeholders in this process? The obvious stakeholders are the building department, fire department, building contractors, and of course fire sprinkler and plumbing contractors. But we cannot forget the elected officials, the land developers, home buyers, architects and designers, realtors, and water purveyors. Remember, the end result is to have a successful implementation of your residential fire sprinkler program. Education of the stakeholders should be your first order of business. Most people have learned everything they know about fire sprinklers by watching shows on television or at the movies. And by the way, most of what you see depicted on the screen is inaccurate and just movie make-believe. So there is a general lack of accurate knowledge about residential fire sprinklers. Therefore, there are many myths and misconceptions about residential fire sprinklers which must be corrected. All of the participants need to understand the reason that residential fire sprinklers are required in the first place. There should not be a fear with regard to fire sprinklers. Fact. Far less water is used to extinguish a fire when fire sprinklers are involved. 15 gallons a minute for one fire sprinkler versus 150 gallons a minute for one fire hose. Fact. Each fire sprinkler operates independently. 
fact. Insurance premiums do not increase when a dwelling is sprinklered. Actually, many insurance companies offer up to a 10% discount. Fact. There is no more chance of a water leak from fire sprinkler piping than there is from the piping leading to the sink or shower. Fact. As you saw in the flashover video, the rest of the house would be heavily damaged by the black sooty smoke as it was forced out of the room on fire. Compare this to the video with the fire sprinkler where the damage is normally confined to the room of fire origin. In your meetings with the stakeholders, you need to increase their knowledge of residential fire sprinklers and obtain their acceptance. There are a number of questions which need to be answered. If you don't address these questions ahead of time, they can make your head spin. However, answering these questions up front will make the entire implementation process run smoother and avoid the sudden roadblock which can easily stop a construction project midstream. Meet with all the stakeholders to address each of these items so that the development of your residential fire sprinkler program is a smooth process. The process you need to consider includes design, plan review, installation, connection to a water source, integration with the plumbing system, the inspection process, and final approval. Resolving all of these issues up front will allow for a smooth process for all parties concerned. As you develop your implementation plan, you will develop answers to each of these questions. One of the questions which needs to be addressed is who is qualified to install residential fire sprinkler systems? Many times this answer will come from state statutes and regulations. However, often these statutes have been developed with a main focus on commercial fire sprinkler systems. Is there a state license needed to design and install a residential fire sprinkler system? Can the design and installation be conducted under a fire sprinkler contractor's license? Can the design and installation be conducted under a plumbing contractor's license? Or can the design and installation be conducted under either license? Is there a possible solution of using a third-party certification to verify the qualifications of the residential fire sprinkler contractor? One method of fire sprinkler design is called a standalone system. In a standalone system, all the fire sprinklers are supplied with a separate piping system. Another common method of fire sprinkler design consists of a piping distribution system which supplies water to both the residential fire sprinklers and to the domestic plumbing fixtures. These types of systems are referred to by several different names. You might hear multi-purpose systems or passive purge system or combined system. But whichever name you use, the result is the same. The multi-purpose system consists of a single piping layout which provides water for the kitchen sink and water to the fire sprinkler in the kitchen ceiling as well. Now the question with regard to multi-purpose systems is who is qualified to install piping for the domestic system and also for the fire sprinkler system. Can a fire sprinkler contractor also install plumbing fixtures? Can a plumbing contractor also install fire sprinklers? Or can a plumbing contractor with a residential fire sprinkler certification 
Install fire sprinklers. Another item to address is what requirements the water purveyor may have. Most water purveyors have dealt with commercial fire sprinkler systems for years, but residential fire sprinkler systems are newer and a slightly different animal. In commercial fire sprinkler systems, the water purveyor is accustomed to connection fees, a separate lateral feeding only the fire sprinkler system, backflow prevention of some type, and possibly monthly charges to the landowner. A residential fire sprinkler system is designed to work from the same lateral that is currently supplying the domestic water to the dwelling. Depending on the pressures available in the water system, there might be a need to increase the water meter size, but most 5 8 inch or 3 quarter inch water meters can easily handle the water supply for a residential fire sprinkler system. Keep in mind also that even though the water meter may be upsized, there is not a routine increase in water usage. The larger flow will only occur during a fire. While working with the water purveyor, an action plan should be developed for use when a homeowner is no longer paying their water bill. The residential fire sprinkler system is a life safety system. So if the water is shut off for lack of payment, will the residential fire sprinkler system also be shut off? If so, the level of life safety within the dwelling is greatly reduced. Develop an action plan for these situations. The action plan should be acceptable to the water purveyor, the fire department, the building department, the health department, and possibly your legal counsel with regard to potential liability. Within your jurisdiction, your stakeholder group will need to determine which department will handle the plan review and inspection of residential fire sprinkler systems. Will a permit be required for installation of residential fire sprinkler systems? Will it make a difference if this fire sprinkler system is a standalone system or a multi-purpose system? Which department will conduct the plan review? Will it be the department which currently performs plan review for commercial fire sprinkler systems? Or will it be the department which currently reviews plumbing plans? Residential fire sprinkler systems typically result in two inspections. One inspection, the rough inspection, occurs prior to covering the walls and sealing with sheetrock. The second inspection is the final inspection, which will be conducted after the ceilings are up, ceiling fixtures are installed, and the construction is nearing completion. Will the same department that handles plan review perform the inspections? Nothing mandates that your process needs to be administered in that fashion. Several jurisdictions have split the duties between the fire department and the building department. In many jurisdictions, the fire department currently conducts plan review of commercial fire sprinkler systems, so they can easily take on the plan review for dwellings. But the building department can be conducting the inspection at the same time they conduct the inspection of the domestic plumbing system. This is one way to easily accommodate fire sprinkler designs, whether they be standalone system or a multi-purpose system. The bottom line is that these areas of responsibility need to be identified and agreed upon. Now that you have determined which departments will handle each of these duties, the next question is whether or not your staff is prepared to take on these duties. Will the staff need training, either for plan review or inspection? Is your staff currently certified, or will additional certifications be needed to prepare your staff? ICC can provide all of your training and certification needs. 
ICC has training programs available to cover the entire residential fire sprinkler program. Training consisting of anything from one day to five days is applicable for designers, installers, contractors, plans examiners, and inspectors. ICC's residential fire sprinkler training is available for contract and can be customized to meet your department's needs. For plans examiners and inspectors, courses are available in a duration of one, two, three, or five days based on your preference. The one day seminar includes a condensed workbook that addresses the critical concepts of the 2009 International Residential Code regarding fire sprinkler systems for one and two family dwellings and townhomes. This course consists of six hours of face-to-face -face training. Seminars of longer duration include an in-depth discussion of the requirements of the 2009 IRC and utilize the residential fire sprinkler systems design, installation, and code administration publication. In the intensive five-day seminar, each participant will work through in-depth reviews of fire sprinkler types and characteristics, fire sprinkler installation criteria, piping materials, and installation applicable to residential fire sprinkler system design, plan review, and inspection. This advanced level seminar will assist plans examiners and inspectors confirm that residential fire sprinkler systems are designed and installed properly. For contractors, designers, and installers, the longer duration courses provide a thorough understanding of the design criteria for residential fire sprinkler systems. These three or five day courses include an in-depth discussion of the requirements of the 2009 IRC and utilize the residential fire sprinkler systems design, installation, and code administration publication. These intensive seminars take an in-depth view into selection of the proper fire sprinkler, location and installation of fire sprinklers, piping and installation requirements, and residential fire sprinkler system design. This advanced level seminar will assist contractors and designers comply with the requirements for residential fire sprinkler system installation. ICC also offers certification exams to cover the entire residential fire sprinkler program. Certifications are available for designers, installers, contractors, plans examiners, and inspectors. The ICC certification program is the oldest, largest, and most prestigious credentialing program for construction professionals in the United States. Our certification exams are maintained to the highest standards and include continuous review by committees of experienced professionals. Becoming Code Council Certified is a significant personal and professional accomplishment and is a key step toward enhanced professional stature. Code Council certificate holders demonstrate a confirmed commitment to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the public. Many local departments and state agencies currently recognize and require ICC certification. Specific details on residential fire sprinkler certifications can be found at the website shown and you will have 10 seconds to jot down that site. ICC offers certification as a residential fire sprinkler designer and installer. This certification exam covers requirements in the IRC and NFPA 13D. This is a two-hour exam consisting of 60 multiple choice questions. The exam covers fire sprinkler and piping components, water supply, system design, and installation. The entire contractor certification bulletin is available at the link shown, and you will have 10 seconds to jot down that site.
ICC also offers certification as a residential fire sprinkler inspector and plans examiner. This certification exam covers requirements in the IRC and NFPA 13D. This is a two-hour exam consisting of 60 multiple choice questions and the exam covers sprinkler and piping components, water supply, system design, and inspection. The entire code official certification bulletin is available at the link shown and you will have 10 seconds to jot down that site. If you need further information or assistance, what other resources are available? There are several publications which can be helpful and several websites that can provide insight and additional details into residential fire sprinklers. And as always, you can contact the ICC staff and they will be glad to help you. ICC has two specific publications to assist with your residential fire sprinkler program. These documents can be located at the website shown. Residential Fire Sprinkler Systems Design, Installation, and Code Administration is published by ICC and co-branded by the American Society of Plumbing Engineers. This unique publication focuses on issues related to the design, installation, plan review, and inspection of residential fire sprinkler systems. This publication contains outstanding technical content with full color graphics and photos, along with tables and real world examples to provide an in-depth understanding of residential fire sprinklers. The discussions and information analyze design and installation using either the IRC or NFPA 13D to provide flexibility and choice for the user. This comprehensive guide provides code officials, designers, plans examiners, installers, and inspectors with a clear understanding of the components used in residential fire sprinkler systems, the purpose and operation of fire sprinkler systems, various design concerns, and proper inspection and acceptance testing of these life safety systems. If you are looking at adoption of residential fire sprinkler systems, this publication is an indispensable tool. The 2009 edition of the IRC is a comprehensive, standalone residential code which establishes minimum regulations for one and two family dwellings and townhouses up to three stories in height. The IRC brings together all building, plumbing, mechanical, fuel gas, energy, and electrical provisions for one and two family dwellings, including criteria for the installation of residential fire sprinklers. Section P2904 contains a specific design criteria that will allow a designer or contractor to lay out and properly design a residential fire sprinkler system. ICC has a web page dedicated to residential fire sprinklers. From this site, you can access ICC publications and ICC training and certifications based on residential fire sprinklers. The Home Fire Sprinkler Coalition contains a wealth of information on residential fire sprinkler systems categorized for consumers, local officials, fire service, builders, and realtors. I will give you another 10 seconds to write down these websites. The ICC government relations staff consists of 23 staff members across the country whose primary focus is to work with local government in the adoption and support of the codes. The ICC plumbing, mechanical, and fuel gas staff focuses on support for all plumbing-based systems, including residential fire sprinkler systems. Both of these ICC divisions can offer guidance and assistance as you work through developing your residential fire sprinkler implementation plan. 
in case you missed any of the websites referenced in this webinar. They are all listed here. This screen will be available for another 30 seconds. If you would like to schedule an ICC seminar, please contact Annie Martinez at 1-888-ICC-SAFE. That's 1-888-422-7233, extension 33818. Or you can email Annie Martinez at amartinez at iccsafe.org.